Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows Okay, maybe you could be the change I need today. I promise that I'm never fell this way. I really hope that you. What's going on, everybody? Got in from the Lexington Card Show, probably, mm, I don't know, what it was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, hour and 40 minute drive one way, so a little bit of time getting there and back. Uh, let's we'll go over what I picked up here in a few. Just gonna hit some of the pieces of the show real quick. One thing I noticed was there were signs about no show policies. I like it. Um, running your own show, it can be chaotic. You're gonna have people no show or cancel last minute. I get the cancellations, especially like, hey, I'm sick or something happened. Hey, got it, hundred percent. You gave somebody notification, hopefully a day or two in advance, so they could try to you know find other people for the tables. The no-shows are starting to get ridiculous when you're talking 10, 15 tables per show. Um, my thought is if I was still running shows, I would charge up front if I didn't know you. If I knew you, it's fine. I was collected to show. I'd rather eat a couple dollars uh, fees onto it on PayPal or something. But, hey, those are your tables. Secure it. You know, tell them, hey, you cancel up to 72 hours in advance, and that's it. If they have a good enough reason, then you, you know, you just take it one at a time. But it's starting to get really bad out here. I don't know about other shows and stuff like that. If you guys have been noticing other shows or know people run them, let me know. Or if you set up. Kind of curious if this is now becoming a common thing. Because I would probably say the last year it's getting a lot worse on the people no-showing onto shows. And it what, what sucks on to, it's not even just from being the person that runs it. It's the people are coming in buying. I mean... You're taking away pe other vendors that could have probably taken those tables. And there have been more of a variety there. Alright, enough on to that. Uh, some of the common things I've still seen. A lot of wax down there. Other than the two gentlemen usually do a lot of wax at all the shows. But a lot of wax down there. A lot of overpriced cards. A lot of people wouldn't budge off of whatever the sales were. If a sale, well, last sale was 84, they wanted a 90 type deal for it. They wouldn't even go down to 80. Uh, a lot, I just moved by a lot of stuff real quick. And I just, you know, there was some nice stuff. It just wasn't going to be in where I wanted to be at on this stuff. Which, hey, you know, it's going to happen a lot out there. But I'm sure I'll hear some more feedback from the show. Um, did talk to some people I knew that were buyers down there. They said it's, you know, they usually don't get to buy a whole lot there unless they're going value hunt, um, hunting down there mostly. But because everything else, nobody will budge on it. Which is weird because when I go to like Louisville shows and other shows, a lot of dealers, you know, they'll work deals with you onto it. I don't know, there's different mentality for every dealer out there. Just remember, some people are, you know, product in, product out. You know, for me, it depends on the card, where I'd be at. Are you a repeat buyer? How much have you spent in the past? There's a lot of stuff that come into play when I start looking at deals on this stuff. But just hearing different things, a couple of the sellers I knew down there, they were like, man, it's been bad for us sellers. I'm like, really? That's kind of different. I know next weekend where I'm set up in Louisville, I've already heard a lot of people saying, oh, they're not going to be going because they don't want to buy before the monster. They'd rather go up there with their money and all this stuff. But like I told everybody else, I said there's a lot of people that aren't going to go to the monster, the big uh, show up in Indy. And they're still going to come down there and buy and want to look around, maybe trade and stuff like that there. I said, you know, it, 
every show is going to be different across the board. Um, I think the biggest thing if you're a dealer is rotating your inventory. That's just my thoughts on to it. You guys ready to see what I got? All right. <clears throat> Picked up three vintage cards, and we'll talk a little bit about them. You guys will know this. These are all going to get graded. They're not going to grade, like, super high. If I get, like, fours and fives, I'm happy. But this is the Willie Mays catch card. Probably one of the better ones I see in condition. The only thing I noticed in the back, it had a little bit of staining done to it. But we'll see how PSA, how well they hit me onto that. Plus this is 58 tops, I'm pretty sure. But the Hank Aaron, really good color onto it. Not too bad on condition onto it. Probably the better out of the bunch. Something pretty cool. And then a 61, uh, yeah, this is, they call it the rookie, but there's another actual rookie of him out there as well, too. It has a little bit of damage down here onto it, but I picked it up pretty cheap. Guy gave me a pretty good deal onto it. It's not often I could find vintage that's in you know, really good shape a lot of time when I'm seeing raw, they're like PSA ones through threes, and I just pass. To me, I just rather go out and you know buy the graded one, get the better condition, better eye appeal. But the maze thing was, you know, something for me when I was a kid. I always liked that card. The Hank Aaron, just because the color onto it and the ass was just something I don't really see this card that much, you know, out there. So I picked it up. One other deal that went on out there, and I didn't even know what the prices were onto the hockey. I'm going to be flat out honest onto it. So the guy sold me this. Um, he had it like for, I think he bought it for 80, gave it to me for 10. Chris Chelios out of SPX uh, 99. $40 card. So I'll give you guys a clue here what I'm doing uh, in a second. I also picked this up out of 29, Anthony Davis and Brandon Knight. I figured what the price point was on take a chance on to when I looked it up I couldn't find only out of 49s doing a little about 120 ish I think or 100 somewhere average So because of what I'm into buying this whole lot for I'm gonna take these send them to DC Probably sports let him go ahead and sell them whenever I get my next PSA in because then that will pay for these two cards that I picked up So I'm not in these cards be for nothing. This is a Ray Bork from the cup once I get my focus back, always is horrible because I put the sleeves on the plastic. There we go. Really nice piece out of 50, nice patch onto it and everything. I think these probably go for a buck and a quarter, buck 50. I really didn't look it up. I just was a fan of Ray Bork when I was a kid. And whenever the first hockey games came out where you could trade, I always would try to pick up Ray Bork on defense. <laughs> Kill my team, but I would always end up getting them. But phenomenal player from back 80s through the 90s and stuff like that. So got to pick him up when I see him. Now this next card has a little bit of history behind it. It's something I missed and I know the gentleman missed. He picked this up for I think like 20 bucks. I gave him like 25 he wanted for it. So Malkin, everybody knows I like penguins, right? So let me show you this. This is the Laces card. So before the Leaf Brian Gray error, you had the President's Choice. I think it was in the game or something it was called. Maybe it was Leaf. I forget. I can't even see the back of it. Give me a second to read here. Do, 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 do. I can't remember if it was Leaf or ITG. Well, anyhow, eventually this all went into uh, becoming underneath the Leaf brand and stuff like that there. So, I started looking this up when I got home. I was like, this is pretty cool. You know, I probably overpaid for it, but whatever. Little behold, there's this little number right there. One of one. So, I started looking these up. This is actually probably a pretty expensive card um, compared to what I paid for. It. No idea. Didn't realize that was a serial number onto it. A one of one. I didn't even see it. I just was more infatuated because it was a cool laces card and stuff like that. But I started looking like there was like a one out of three that sold for like a hundred and I think it was a hundred and ten dollars. Um, so one on one gives a little bit more money and more value into it. But cool little piece for the PC onto it for Malkin. Uh, really cool piece. I can't remember if I, this fell underneath ITG at the time frame. I was trying to look at the back of this. I know somebody's going to hit me up and I just don't have my magnifying glass to see or if this was I could see where the at thing is and I just can't figure it out offhand. But this was an actual brand of cards back then. This ain't like, you know, some kind of crazy thing on to it. But pretty cool overhaul to find something like this out in the raw. 
And actually being a one on one on to it, I, I had no idea that was a one on one until I got home with it. So pretty cool pickups. Like I said, the Malk will go into PC. The Bork will be, you know, one of those things I might use down the road for something. It was kind of cool with the deal the guy gave me on to it. I really thought maybe this Chelios was like a $15, $20 card. There was like a sale of something like $20, and then the most recent out of $40 onto it. But this dude was crazy good for uh, the Blackhawks back in the day. Another guy I always try to get, usually him and Bork on my team. And like I said, Anthony Davis out of 25. I found the out of 49, and I was like, ah, I'll take a gamble onto it. So I figured when I do my next batch DC, I'll throw these two in, which will cover getting these two cards here basically for free. And it's a wash onto it for me afterwards to where I only bought the uh, vintage cards onto it. So really, really not bad out there. I did find something out there. Uh, a couple cards to grade eventually. But uh, next week, like I said, guys, Louisville, Kentucky, Derby City Card Show. That's the one. It's at the, I think it's called the Crown Inn Plaza, if I recall right. Uh, if you're by, stop by 1130. Make sure before 1130, you guys get a ticket from me. you got to be present to win. That frame Dennis Rodman jersey will be given away. And pretty much it. After that, I'll be at the Monster Friday and Saturday, so... Hitting trade night up, hit the show both days. Well, fr my Friday I'll probably do most of my stuff, and then Saturday I'll probably, if I didn't see or if I see something I wanted, yeah, I'll go back the second day, you know, if I'm an indecisive on and see if it's still there type deal. And that'll pretty much kill me out for the month of June, I believe, with shows, other than probably popping into Louisville. Uh, j, j All-Stars show, I think, is like, a week after the monster or two weeks after i'll have to take a look at it all right guys hope you guys enjoyed the video i know i was rambling on a little bit more onto this one here before getting to the cards and then talking about the cards and some of my plan of action and thoughts onto it but nothing crazy like i've been picking up but stay tuned there's some neat stuff coming in the mail uh i believe on tuesday i don't know where i'm gonna get this video out but i'll have both those videos out other than that, guys, stay safe out there as always. See you next one.